beautiful people, thank you so much for tuning in. Today we are reviewing the Lear Low D Whistle, and I am super excited to try it out. Now, you folks will know that I am a huge fan of Lear High Whistles. I play them all the time on my channel, but today we're reviewing their first low whistle, and it's a low D. Now, this Lear whistle came in a classic Lear box with the Lear logo. These make for great gifts, and of course, it keeps it safe and sound when it's on its way to you in the post. Now, this whistle is a large bore whistle and a straight bore whistle. It's made from aluminium, so it's reasonably light as far as low whistles go, but the polished Delrin mouthpiece is a little on the heavy side. But this combination of materials is what is going to give this whistle its beautiful sound. Now, the low whistle does differ in shape and design to the high whistles somewhat, but you do have the overall look that you do get with the high whistles as well. And this includes the rings on the whistle, the black head, and the signature mouthpiece at the back here. If I show you some close-ups of the whistle, you'll see that the mouthpiece at the top here has the classic Lear design. But rather than having the blade on the body, the blade is actually part of the Delrin mouthpiece. The Lear logo has been laser engraved onto the front here, and the whistle is tunable from this slider as we go a little further down. Like the high D whistles and the high whistles in the range, the low D whistle also has the classic rungs on the body, and we have some holes as we edge down the whistle here. You can see that, as usual, the middle finger holes are a little on the large side, but the finger spacing isn't particularly distant. You shouldn't have any problems if you are familiar with the Piper's grip. And I can actually use uh, my finger pads to reach the holes on this whistle, although what I tend to do is a half Piper's grip, so finger pads on the top and Piper's grip on the bottom. You'll see as we get to the bottom here, we also have more rungs and the key of the whistle right here. As I said, it's a rather wide ball whistle, so perhaps not ideal if um, you have arthritis or something, it might be a little bit wide to grip. You might want to try and find a thinner low D whistle, but it's pretty standard as far as low D whistles go. So let's go through some scales and we'll test the um, breath pressure playability of this whistle and see where we stand. quite a bit of push to get to that uh, essentially third octave D, but generally it's quite a balanced sounding whistle, gorgeous tone to it. I'm loving that sort of crisp and clear sound that it has. It's a very kind of traditional sound, which I really like. Um, and I know Leah are quite keen on designing for the modern player, but with traditional sort of sound in mind, which I'm really pleased with. But yeah, I would say uh, great strength on the low notes. especially the bell note, which is really nice. Wonderful strength on the cross-fingered C natural, which is great. And again, as you get further up, they do get rather loud as you hit the top, but generally reasonably balanced. So as an example, I'll give you a low D, a mid D and a high D, and we'll see how the tone changes and the volume and strength of those notes. That's pretty balanced, um, pretty sweet throughout, and as you can see, not difficult to hit. Half holing is slightly difficult because of the size of the holes themselves. You just need to get used to um, sort of revealing less of the hole to hit those uh, chromatic scales or half half hold notes. Um, the tendency for me is because these holes are quite large, I open them too much when I'm half holing. So you'd need to be aware of that. But again, that's just getting used to the whistle like you do with any particular whistle anyway. I'm gonna do a slow playthrough now so we can get an idea of how in tune this whistle is. But bear in mind it is tunable as well and it would need to be warmed up to hit those notes perfectly. But I'll do that quickly for you now. So we're not bad on tuning, we're pretty good. Again, 
Uh, you can adjust this. The weather and the room you're in, and how much you've warmed up the whistle, will affect the tuning, of course, and also how familiar you are with the whistle. And that goes for every single whistle out there.、Um, the more familiar you are with it. The better you'll play it. So I'm going to play an extract for you now from Raglan Road, which is a trad tune. I'm doing a cover with Luke Webb and some other amazing musicians coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. And of course, I'll do a tutorial as well. So let's hear how this sounds. <laughs> So as you can hear, that gorgeous, rich, a little bit mellow tone, but still clear, resonant, and beautiful. It kind of really rings out. I hope that's coming across on camera、um, because it's picking up really well in my living room. It's kind of a big space with a wooden floor, so it really resonates in here, and it sounds really good.、Um, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. One thing I'll also say that I forgot to mention earlier was this whistle is quite loud. I wouldn't say it's an indoor practice whistle. It's more of an outdoor session whistle. Would make a great busking whistle, I'm sure, because it does have a lot of strength and a lot of volume to it. So probably not the best if you're in a semi-detached or terraced house, or if you think this will disturb your neighbours or other family members. It's definitely one for those people who want to get out there and play and be heard. So I think that's pretty much everything covered for this whistle.、Um, I haven't found any problems with clogging in particular. Again, usually a quick blow through or even suck back sometimes on the whistle head、uh, will clear any of that anyway. But I haven't found this clogs particularly. My only real reservation is that it's slightly weighty on the top. So if you are sensitive to the weight of whistles,、um, just consider that before going ahead and purchasing one of these. They're currently listed at 220 euros on the Lear website. They might take a little while to arrive to you because Lear are always busy. But if you're desperate to try one of these and hit that gorgeous sound, then I can definitely recommend them. Now, just to put this disclaimer out there, I do get sent Lear whistles for free. I have purchased a Lear whistle as well、um, because I like them. I play them a lot, and I actually asked if I could buy this because I'd been waiting so long for it and I hadn't heard from them. And then they sent me one. So、um, they are whistles that I would buy. Just because I've been sent them doesn't mean I'm giving you any information or biased reviews.、Um, just because they've been sent to me, a lot of the whistles I review on the channel have been sent to me. Um, but what it does is it gives each whistle maker a chance to show you what they're making and just get a little bit of exposure. So please do go and check them out and let me know what you thought in the comments down below. I'll probably be playing this whistle a fair bit on the channel, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week! Don't forget to check out some of my other Lear whistle reviews and some of my recent low whistle reviews. You'll find all my whistle reviews right here. And don't forget to tune in soon for that tutorial for Raglan Road with the amazing Luke Webb Harpist. Have a wonderful week! Thank you so much for watching. Happy whistling, and I'll see you soon.